Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. A couple videos back I said if uh, What Your Mechanic Won't Tell You video did well, I would do another one, and it did okay. So I'm gonna do a part two of uh, things that either your mechanic won't tell you or things that you need to do when you take your vehicle to have it worked on that can definitely save you some time, money, and heartache. So I'm gonna dive into that and just start from the top of my list and work way down. One of the first things that I did notice recently that really kind of bothered me was when it comes to your quick loop places. And I know I've talked a bunch of shit in the past about quick loop places, mainly just because a lot of times they just hire people with no skill and you know, they're working on 40, 50, 60, 70, $80,000 vehicles and they screw them up. Um, one of the biggest things though is regardless of who's working on it, how skilled they are, is the prices of what those places charge. And I had a customer bring a vehicle in and they had some of the receipts of the past work they had done. And one of the recent ones was a quick loop place about 80 miles from where I live. Again, I live in a kind of a rural small town area and the closest city is 100,000 people, 80 miles away. And this place charged them $129 for a non-synthetic five quart oil change, which that's it. Five quarts of oil, an oil filter, out the door you go. And now I'm not saying anything good about the shop where I work at, but uh, the standard oil change price for the same thing at my shop would have been $49.95. And that would have also had your kind of basic inspection done you know, tires checked, brakes checked, uh, air filter checked. And you also get your shit vacuumed out and your dash wiped down, which I think that's ridiculous to do, but that's beside the point. And a synthetic five quart change would be $69.95. So you can see even doing a synthetic change, the other place was, you know, almost double. And, you know, I realize it's quick loop place, big city, blah, blah, blah. Well, big city to me, um, you know, but, that still doesn't make sense in my mind of why a five quart oil change should cost 130 bucks plus tax. It just really blew my mind. So my advice is, I mean, you want to use a quick lube oil change place, you know, you like to live on the edge and live risky, go for it, but check the prices around because I mean, don't pay, don't overpay for an oil change. Especially when most of these quick loop places don't even use decent oil. They use the cheapest bulk oil they can get their hands on, so. Okay, enough of me rambling on about quick loop places. I'm gonna move on to the next one. And that has to do with labor rates and, well, labor time specifically. And this is kind of a hard one if you don't really know much mechanically about your vehicle. Uh, I'm gonna try and explain it the best I can, but I'm gonna use a 2012 Chevy Silverado with a 5.3 that needs a water pump for my basis for the explanation here. And the labor time for this job is about 2.2 hours. And what happens is when people compound labor times on for doing the job, but doing other stuff that has to be done or removed just to get down to the part that you're replacing, for example, let's say they replaced your serpentine belt and your water pump and they charge you three hours. Well, basically what they're doing is they're taking that labor time of the belt and the water pump separately and combining them. So if you're doing a water pump and a serpentine belt, the labor time should still be 2.2 hours because you have to take that belt off in order to do the water pump. So whether you're replacing the belt or not, the labor time should still be the same, 2.2 hours. Where you get into trouble is where people compound labor times on for doing stuff that you're already there doing. Hopefully that was explained well enough. So be careful with the labor times. A lot of shops are honest about it, but there's a lot of shops that do a bunch of shady stuff and they're not. Um, I guess while I'm on the labor time thing, I'm going to do something that's almost, well, it is even worse than doing that. And that's taking a job that takes a lot of labor time but half-assing the job and shortcutting it 
so you get it done faster but still charge the same amount of labor time and, and for an example of this i'm going to use say doing a blend door actuator on a vehicle uh, you know your hvac uh, say it doesn't switch from hot to cold it's got a bad blend door actuator well some vehicles are easy to do they take like an hour but there's a couple out there that it can be six to eight hours worth of labor in order to do something like that that's because you have to pull the entire dash out of the vehicle to get there and i saw this done a few times and i mean i completely lost my shit when i saw it and that's when somebody literally cut a hole somewhere in their vehicle in order to replace the actuator or to get to a part behind the dash and then they charge the customer for the whole eight hour job instead of doing it the correct way pulling the dash and replacing the part so you know if you have to cut a hole in something and then patch it up with duct tape that's not the right way to do it and I've seen it done a few times before and the customer got billed for the whole labor time when it probably just took him a couple hours to do it and it was done completely wrong and you know that's not only is that just somebody that shouldn't even be in business but that's just completely taking advantage of someone's vehicle or someone and completely screwed up their vehicle okay this next one is for when you bring a vehicle in to have it worked on um, please Give as much information as possible about any symptoms, what was happening, what was going on when, you know, vehicle failed or broke. And also specifically, what you were doing right before the vehicle had its issue. And I'm going to use an example of what happened over 10 years ago that fits this perfectly. Vehicle came in, wouldn't start. It was a late 90s Toyota 4Runner. And I went through the whole process, my diagnostic process, to eliminate everything and finally figured out what was wrong with it, ordered a part, fixed it, gave the customer the bill, and they completely lost their shit when they had to pay the diagnostic time in order to fix their vehicle. And what their vehicle needed was a computer, but that's, that's not the funny part about the whole story. It's the fact that if they would have told me what happened right before, I could have fixed the vehicle like that. And what had happened was on those vehicles, the computer is located on the passenger side, kind of on the floor by the A pillar. And right before their vehicle no longer would operate, they discharged a nine millimeter inside the passenger compartment of the vehicle. And where did the little lead projectile go? Right through the computer. Had they told me that they were a dumbass beforehand, I could have been like, okay, no problem. Yep, there's a hole right there. Needs a computer, ordered, replaced, done. But instead, they tried to cover up their stupidity and it cost them more in the end because they weren't honest. So honesty is very important when it comes to both sides of the spectrum. And finally, the last one I'm going to talk about is tires. And a lot of people don't realize this or know this, but there's two main types of tires. There's P-series or passenger tires or LT or light truck tires. And if you're in the city, it really doesn't matter much. But if you're in the country where I live, or you're off-roading a lot, or if you go to different areas, you know, vacationing or visiting, and you get a rental car, it's important to know what kind of tires you have on your vehicle. Uh, mainly with rentals, but also it's, it's pretty important with uh, your own personal vehicles, because a lot of vehicles are labeled or they're sold as an off-road vehicle, but they're not really meant for any type of off-road use that is, pretty common in my area. And a lot of people run into this problem when they run P-series tires off-road. Uh, you have a lot more problems with blowouts, punctures, just because it wasn't designed for them. These tires were designed for highway use and that's pretty much it. So if you're gonna go to an area that you haven't been to before and you plan on doing you know, any kind of like off-road stuff where you normally don't do that stuff with your vehicle or if you have a rental, 
Uh, take a look at what kind of tires you have. It will specifically say on the size right in front, it'll say a P or it'll say an LT. So for example, P235-7515 or an LT235-7515. If you have the LT, uh, you're pretty much good for decent off-road use. Because if you have the P-series tires and you take it off-road specifically in my area, chances are you're either gonna have a rock puncture or a blowout and it's gonna cause problems. If you don't care, you don't care, but you know it's one thing to look at when you're doing something off-road in an area in a vehicle you don't normally drive because I deal with it constantly on a day-to-day -day basis at work. And before I close the video out, I'm gonna say one last thing when it comes to people complaining that their mechanic doesn't smile or he's not friendly enough. And you know what? Most of us have to work on rusty, muddy, greasy, nasty shit all day, diagnose problems that would give any normal person a migraine. And so if we're not in exactly the most talkative mood or we don't have a smile on our face at that particular time, piss off. You do our job for a day and see how you feel. Anyway, so that is part two of what your mechanic won't tell you and hope you guys like it. Maybe I'll do a part three. I'm sure I could come up with a bunch more material, but until then, thanks everybody for watching. Until next time, we'll see you guys later. Goodbye.